Hey guys. Oh shit. Hold on, let me fix myself here. Um, how is everybody doing? It's been a while since I've seen you guys face to face, but um, I wanted to go ahead and dive a little bit into Reddit, see what's going on, see what 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 uh what news is is happening within the community, trying to get some community sentiment. It's been like three or four days since I uploaded a video, but I've been I've been so busy trying to uh, work on my um, my horror gaming channel and my my uh, game review channel, I have two other channels other than this. So uh, I thought we could just go down the line here as we normally do for this rapid raid Reddit conversation. Uh, you, you guys know me at this point when it comes to this specific content, which is relatively new. And the reason I like doing this is because it, it helps me keep a pulse on community sentiment. Uh, Reddit is a place where a lot of people come to uh, share their actual opinions. You know, sometimes there's the YouTube comments you can refer to, but Oftentimes it gets, you know, this way and that, whereas, um, you know, I feel like Reddit threads are often consistent with specific topics. And, you know, I, I could do um, like champion guides and how to's, how to do dungeons. And, you know, I, I still intend to do all that. But for the most part, like there are so many other creators out there, especially within Raid now, who already do that kind of thing. And I wouldn't really be bringing anything new other than you guys hearing my voice, seeing my face, getting my two cents on it, and seeing my specific gameplay. But I don't see any other creators doing this kind of thing where they just sit here and uh, try to have an academic, convers academic conversation about what's going on within Raid and whatnot. So, yeah, let's uh, go right into this. I'll try to do time codes, but I'm super busy. So if, if time codes don't show up in a while, like... Uh, forgive me but but yeah um anyone playing this feel like i'm not raiding let's see hi all five years free to play i wonder if any raider is in the same situation like mine and by this situation i mean one the number of own lego and champs generally is high but what is actually used is relatively few in my case i have 150 unique legos but what is really properly geared is 14 and another 14 is in random gear the rest is in naked non-use so let me go ahead and open up my my account real quick just so you know we can kind of see where i'm at because there is some truth to this right um when you first start you're pretty much gonna have everybody geared up but once you get to a certain point just like this guy's talking about you're gonna have all these champions and you'll probably use exactly what he said like 14 of them you're not really going to be using many of them. And we can we can check that here, right? So if we if we look at my account right now, let's go ahead and take a take a, a look at both included in the master vault and in the reserve vault. And this is what's here, right? And just off the bat, I can tell you I don't really use a lot of these champions. Like I use Kandrafon sometimes. I use Harima pretty often. I don't use Baron, Ninja kind of, Cupidus, yes, Ronda sometimes. These guys I don't really... Emic, yes. Arbiter, yes. Sometimes Eric's. Sun Wukong on a more, you know, regular basis. Georgid, yes. You know, some Hydra champs, Arena champs, and that's basically it. But, like, like more than half of this page is full of the champions that I don't use. I don't use Clayton. Quintus, I don't use. Um, Wither the Crown, sometimes I use. Shiromani, I don't really use. Molly, I don't use. Uh, Uko, sometimes I use. Pytheon, I don't really use. Yakarl, Mithrala, sometimes I use. Foley, I don't use. Tyrant. You guys get the point. And, um, like, let me let me see if I can, like, see Molly, I don't use. Like, she's in random gear. Um, Ghostborn, I think I have set up just for uh, Doom Tower. And, like, he's in my clan boss team. I have Grazer Iron Good. I haven't geared him out. Tomb Lord's not geared out. Tumesia, I've just kind of put in random gear. Astrolith is enough, you know what I mean? Uh, I have another Lana Theral that I haven't built out. Uh, Blizzards in random gear, Kaja, you know what I mean? So yeah, uh, he's not the only one. And I'd be curious to see if you guys who have been playing as long as I have or been playing a long time or just anybody in general, are you guys in this situation where you have all these champions? Look, I have 661 champions. You know, obviously not a lot of them are Legos. But I remember when I started out, I was happy to get a free to play, or I was happy to get um, epic champions, and now I don't, I don't use a lot of them, like Madame Seri. You know what I mean? So, yeah, he's not alone in this sentiment. 
many amazing champs they got you they that you got sorry is a thing uh many cha many amazing champions that you've got but not really using though they are meta example i'm not using trunda rodos you're not using rodos narcis and ancora torment wixwell yastrid pytheon yeah exactly there's a lot of these champions that are amazing and for a lot of players they'd want them but like you're just you're just not gonna use them all the time the other side of it is like you only have so much good gear and you want that gear to go to your best champions but um i don't know like you you can't have all of your champions geared out perfectly so i guess what i'm trying to say is there's only so much gear to go around you know what i mean what I can do is finishing all dungeons 25, but farm 20 during events only. True, not bothered by hard. I usually do 10, personally. If if I'm doing like a, a dungeon divers slash like like dragon and champion training at the same time, then I solo with Theodore. That's like triple dipping. I've done videos on that before. Unkillable. As for fusions, uh, very comfortable. You can do them very comfortably. Yeah. I have no idea why I'm doing them. I feel like the gurn, uh, the I feel like the game turned into a collect all, collect them all. Anybody in the same boat? Yeah, hundred percent. The sacred order. You don't have to play the game if you don't find it interesting anymore. And no sunk cost fallacy, at least in terms of money, because you're free to play. That's true. The only the only sunk cost fallacy is the time spent, right? So like, yeah, you could say, oh, I'm free to play, but at the end of the day, you spent a lot of time. You invested a lot of time. And time is the type of currency that you're not going to ever get again. This time that you have on Earth is all you're ever going to get. You can't, you can't get more time. You can't earn more time. You can't buy more time. I can't even give time to, uh, like my wife, for an example. If I wanted to give like five minutes of my life to add on to hers, you can't do that. Like you can share money. You can earn more money. Money's always going to come, but this is it. So uh, he's right. If you don't find the game interesting anymore, I say quit. In fact. It's it's like there was a conversation that I, I had with somebody and it, and it was just like dude if you're if you're not and like what I wanted to tell them was was this like if if you if you're complaining about the game so much and there are things to complain about for sure but it's just like all, all you're doing is complaining so far so it's just like just just quit just quit do yourself a favor do me a favor um do everybody a favor just quit the game but most of all, do it for yourself. Because yeah, if you're not enjoying the game anymore, there's no point in you playing. The point of a video game is to play it for fun. Nowadays, like I, I play for fun. I'm not really competitive. I've just, I was never really into PvP. If there's a fusion that I want to do, I'll do it. If there's something for me to do, I'll do it. But I'm not really going to go out of my way to really like do dailies and uh, advanced quests anymore. Like I'm just, I'm just not that kind of player anymore. It's, it's gotten to the point where I, I kind of like, if I want to log in for five minutes, I'll log in for five minutes. If there's content that I want to do, I'll do the content. But if there's content that I don't want to do, I'm not going to do it. Like, I don't like Live Arena. I don't participate in Live Arena. There's a fusion I don't like. I'm not going to do the fusion. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You do what you want, what's best for you and your wallet and your time, however you want to do it. I understand how the game can make you feel FOMO. But it's just like you you will be fine without it. Like a lot of a lot of content creators, for an example, were saying, Oh, don't miss out on Wixwell. Don't don't skip Wixwell. Don't don't skip out on Yastrid. Bro, I'm good. I'm Gucci. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm fine without it. Like they're they're champions that be that would be sitting in my vault right now doing nothing. So it's like, yes, you can you can for the most for most of you guys, you can afford to just miss a fusion or two, um, depending on you know how you feel. Of course, if there's like a nut level fusion, maybe you want to consider trying a little bit or stacking resources to save for that. But, and this, I'm just speaking personally for me. But yeah, if you don't enjoy the game anymore, if you're just going to complain about, oh, the, the ads and the prices and Polarium did this and Polarium did that and Polarium do better, it's like, I get it. I get the conversation. I get the allure. Um, and, you know, I have my complaints about the game too, but ultimately I just, I just, don't participate in anything i don't want to participate anymore and that's just the way that it is uh and that's that's what i would recommend to any of you guys 
who are finding yourself complaining more about the game than you guys are enjoying the game. The point is to enjoy a game. There are so many other games out there. So uh, consider just quitting. Not look, look. Let me, let me, let me. Last, last pin right here. Okay, it is in my best interest as a YouTuber for raid that as many people stay within the raid community because that means that I. Um, I have another viewer or I can get another view out of it uh, potentially right if my if my shit's good enough but it's just like I'm not gonna sit here and tell you guys to stay in raid if I if I know and I can hear from you guys complaining that you're not enjoying it anymore just just quit okay um I I'll be fine without it you, you know what I mean I'm, all the content creators will be fine if everybody decides to leave we'll pivot in a different direction I think a lot of this is not just doing content. If you pushed Centranos, Amius on hard, you'd build a lot more champions. That's true. But again, that's content I don't really want to stress over because there are so many things about Centranos that I can complain about. But it's just like, at the end of the day, complaining about it is not going to do much. Like, sometimes I'm going to feel like I want to complain, right? I'll make a video on that. But I'm always going to hit you guys with, you know take my opinion with a grain of salt uh if you don't want to do it don't do it like the same shit that i'm saying right now is the same stuff i'd be telling you in those videos where i do complain but i, I try my best not to complain i'm not really a complainer anymore but i do like talking about the community sentiment about um like the last one i did oh uh if you nerf wicks will um then yada 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 or the primal shards so yeah i like to give my my two cents on and talk about those topics but keep in mind it's not really me complaining about it it's just me relaying messages if you push hard you'd build a lot more champions if you were doing x y and z you'd have a lot more champions yes obviously the game should be fun you should play it how you want but doing all dungeons to 25 with 14 champs is very very possible this is true you can go up to 25 25 is not that hard especially if you've been playing five years even if free to play i would argue that if he was trying to push for hard but i mean you're gonna get to the same point right because i'm doing all the hard 10 dungeons and I'm I'm still at the same spot where I was before. You know what I mean? Not really. I'm not that much more invested. I, I pretty much just leave the game on auto whenever I feel like it. If I'm watching something on the TV, yeah. Not not really like being in the game can make you feel good. So if you feel like taking a break from raid, feel free to take a break from raid too. There, that's the other thing. You're not playing the game, my dude. Yeah, true. You listed all those meta champions. You don't have, you, but you don't use them at all. You're insane. Meta players improve their account by using Nut or Armand. It's true. I can't believe OP doesn't do hard dungeons. Original poster doesn't do hard dungeons either. Either gear uh, from normal dungeons is terrible. You're waiting for the moment. Maybe take a break until new content comes along. Exactly. Play at your own pace. No one else's decision. I'm passively doing da daily CVC, etc. Not interested. Just the habit. Exactly. Same thing here. I'm passively doing all these things. I, you know, I, I do my Hydra, Clan Clash, uh, CVC, whatever you want to call it. All this stuff is on auto. I do my dailies. Sometimes I've been, I've been missing dailies sometimes. What champs are you sitting on that you haven't built yet or really dove into using much yet? Um, actually, let me, let me pull up something real quick just because it's going to be easier for me to make time codes uh, later on. So that was at what, 13, 13 minutes? Yeah. Sorry, just bear with me. I'm gonna keep this. Um, what what was the topic we just talked about? Quit raid, basically. What champs are you sitting on that you've not really built yet? Let's not talk about that. Let's move on. Uh, didn't expect this in the summon rush today. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck, dude. I didn't expect this in today's summon rush. I guess I can now look forward to using these, uh, using the fusion for a free faction faction guardian. Is Rosin good in any particular area these days? His kit seems fine, but nothing special. You know who I know still uses uh, Rosin? Um, do you guys know Besmir? Moderator, usually in Channel 1, English 1. He uses Rosin in Arena still. Not that good, because he's been power crept hard. But back then, he was still great. Like He's cool if you have nobody else, but other than that, I'd, I'd be pretty pissed if I pulled him personally so you know that's a that's a big rip dude rosin scarhide what is grush even good for 
Faction Wars. Who to six star next? I do this all the time. Hoskarl versus Creedin. In terms of crowd control, Creedin seems like a straight upgrade, but Hoskarl Hos Hos has better offensive potential, especially since frozen enemies get 25 damage reduction. If you have both, do you find yourself using one or the other, and why? Creedin stands out most, most, uh, mostly to me, because this is where you would use him. These kinds of champions, uh, I'm thinking like faction, not faction war, sorry, uh, Fire Knight, right? I've actually never used Hoss Girl, so again, take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt. But I have used Creedin before in um, Fire Knight, and the, the crowd control is great for the waves, not to mention the freeze, which helps to push back the turn meter for the Fire Knight. I think that if you're worried about doing more damage, you should just get better gear and find ways to nuke through the waves to get to the boss a lot better. And um, yeah, because you shouldn't have to bring in somebody. Like, you're, you're going to want to focus each of your champions in their respective strengths. So for an example, Creedon is going to be a crowd control champion, and he's really good at crowd control and pushing back turn meter for the hard fire knight. I'm not going to bother really building him out with damage. Now, that is something that you can do, and I strongly encourage you guys to do if you're at the point in the game where you can do that kind of thing. But starting out, I wouldn't bother with that. I would focus on making sure that your uh, support champions do just that, and then maybe stack on some uh, attack after that. For an example, case in point, Stagnite. Stagnite and Cardiel. Both of them, I focused on building them out with speed, high amounts of speed, so that they can take as many turns as possible, so they can get their their ally attack, or um, Cardiel could get his ally attack off. And Stagnite, I built with high speed and high accuracy, so he could place the debuffs and help get through the waves. It wasn't until I got the gear, and I got the, um, what do you call it, I got like the... I got the team down pat that I was like, okay, I'm going to start building these guys with crit rate, crit damage, and attack. So between the two, I'd probably choose Creedon. That's just my two cents. Creedon v. Oscar. What attention to detail is your favorite in-game? What is there? Is there attention to detail in this post? What's going on here? What is the attention to, de to detail? Accuracy, do you need it? For Yannicka, I don't really know. Should I still put pull on a 2x chance? Yeah, you're always going to want to pull on a 2x. Who was your first Lego and how did it change your account? And do you still use that champion? My first Lego, and I'd be interested to see what you guys have for your first legendary champion. Mine was level 35, and I got uh, Cupidus. Cupidus was my first first one. And uh, yeah, he he did mainly in Arena early on, early Arena. But then I stopped using him for a while just because I ended up getting better champions. And back then, I didn't really know how to build champions out either. And I didn't use him in Clan Boss either. I used him for wave clearing pretty much. The Dungeons was a huge one. But it wasn't until Hydra came out that I actually took him out of the vault again and I got Venus. So when I got, when Hydra came out, I had Cupidus and I started using him because he's an awesome damage dealer for um, Hydra. But then, then I got Venus and then he became an even better damage dealer. So yeah, uh, that, that's that's my experience with my first champion. You know, some people like this one got Pixneal. The only way she changed my account was that she was taking an extra slot in the vault, bringing massive disappointment. You know, actually, I'm not. I'm not too. Um, I'm not too against Pixneal because I've used her in the um, in Centranos, and she's actually quite useful in Centranos. I also have a high level blessing for her, so that might be that might be another thing there. I think it was 1730. That was the time thing. What was this one? Who should I 60 next open for criticism? I'm just curious to see what people would say here. 
Who should I 60 next? He's got Geo for sure. Mm. Joffred is actually pretty cool. I think Joffred would be a nice option. Geo then Talgar. Yeah, Talgar is pretty good. Is Talgar that good? Yeah, he's good. We always get we we always get these um who should I 60 next things. Best gearing page. Um he says, hello, I'm struggling to find good gearing recommendations pages. Hell Hades. Definitely the, the default recommendations in raid are bad. A good the probably the best gearing page to follow would probably be Hell Hades. Ayumi Love also does um some gearing recommendations, but like the best thing is probably just to go to YouTube and find a guide. Or just ask a clan mate. I don't really get the draw to Aphidius. His control kit doesn't have much to do with his HP burn kit, and, and the fact that he's stuck in his attack form makes him squishy for uh, Arena. My point is he feels too separate and not very usable. Yeah, I think I used uh, Aphidius on somebody's account once, and I just wasn't too impressed. Like, he did damage for sure, but his second form was extremely lax, uh, la lackluster. Michinaki is an awesome champion. How's my Crixia build? Looking for guild, Hydra, boss, tweak. Would you rather continue to fight Hydra the way it is or fight all six heads at once? Interesting. I really think this would change the entire dynamic of Hydra. Less RNG, more opportunity to build and speed tune teams. Hydra to me is the worst boss fight. Top worst. Uh, I don't think he's. I don't think he's the worst. But maybe it's just because I'm I'm jaded and completely disassociated with how difficult Hydra is now. Scarab King is better than Hydra, even though his mechanics are just as bad. Like the worst, the worst boss in Raid is probably Amius. He's convoluted, complicated, no good reason, completely RNG. You could have him down to like, like ten percent health, and then out of nowhere he'll get a kill in and just start destroying your team, and he'll heal all the way back up like 30, 40 minutes wasted hence why i don't bother with amius anymore hydra is way too much of a time sink yeah that's why i just throw it on auto let it play in the background while i watch king kong versus godzilla boring to manual and the whole five percent three percent resist uh resist shit needs to be removed yeah for those of you who don't know there is a built in the game three percent to get resisted no matter how much accuracy you have on that note why is that even a thing and make uh, why make accuracy a main stat you need throughout the entire game? Poison Cloud is fine. It's a mechanic that you can plan around and maintain. I can't do anything about the boss just rolling that certain 3% number on a dice roll and get my debuff block for no reason, none at all. All just because. Exactly. I just need to rant. I know I'm not alone in feeling this. I know there's a ton on the opposite side as well. What are some possible ideas that you guys would have directed at you guys? How would you guys improve Hydra? Feel free to say you wouldn't change anything at all. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Corrected. It's 3%, not 5. Feels like 50. At a save state? Yeah, I agree. Especially for runs that do take over an hour. Let's save progress so we can pick it up and not need to interrupt, interrupt real life shit for something. It is an amazing suggestion. I agree. If I, if I were to um, improve Hydra... One, I think this is an amazing idea. I think it's it would be interesting to... Uh, our tough is... That's an awesome suggestion. Yeah, I, I would think that... Fighting all six at once would be good. I do think adding a save state during Hydra runs would be awesome. Because the last thing that you want is to... Be like 45 minutes into uh, a Hydra run. And Polarium hits you with that... Oh, uh, we're going to have a... In 15 minutes, we're going to have a uh, an update and we need to shut down the servers or reset the servers or something. And you're like, uh, but I'm I'm doing something. You know what I mean? If you could if you if you could save the game, if you could save during the Hydra run, that would be awesome. Amazing suggestion. Yes. The Sacred Order fighting six heads at, at once sounds worse. Mm. It does sound hard. And it could be extremely annoying, but I, I feel like it would change things up. What do you guys think? 
oh, it's 3%. I swear I heard it was 5%. But to add, I wouldn't mind trying it out. I, I'd rather know all six are, are, are up rather than wondering what's going to regenerate ne next. Um, yeah, because instead of guessing, okay, which head is going to come out next, you're already aware of, um, you know, which, which, uh, which head is already there. How can you reach 5,000 points? Made some calculations. If you run any dungeon at stage three with an average of 6.4 points, Ayumi Love Data says is the best, you need 781 runs, eight energy, 6.2. Is he doing dungeon divers? He's talking about dungeon di divers. Why would you do... Um... Is it? I guess I've never really thought about this. He's saying stage three because Ayumi data, Ayumi love data says it's the best. The problem with stage three, as well as it's a total waste, is that you're chasing mystery shards and the gear will be insta sell. I'd be more inclined to slightly lower the points per stage to 16 or 20. At least some gear may be worth taking. Exactly. Um, and that's probably the biggest thing. Like, yeah, if you're, if you're looking straight points, this makes sense. Stage 30, energy per, per run. But in order to get points for dungeon divers, you need to drop gear. And in those stages, the likelihood of you getting mystery shards instead are going to be a lot higher. I wouldn't suggest that. I would suggest, yes, 16 or 20. And we're not going to do that. Deciding on if you'll do the Sand Devil event when the 500... Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, it was funny. The other day, I, I got my 500 uh, energy reward, and I was like, all right, I guess I'll do the event. So, yeah. Clan boss, Hydra help, Black Knight, what are I? What? What are I? HP champion, average damage. Generic single target provoke, AoE, increased defense on a two-turn cooldown. I guess it's okay. Unkillable on himself every second hit. Where does anybody use Black Knight? Empower Rathalos Blademaster. Yeah. Same. Lord B? Lord B4? This name sounds familiar. He was my first summon Lego five years ago. He lives in the vault. Never feed your first copy of Mythicals, Legos, or Epics. He could be buffed at any moment. That's true. Don't know what to focus on anymore. Don't know what to focus on anymore. Feel super stagnant at the moment. Have no idea what or who or what to focus on at this point. I just hit level 53. I've already dropped some money and refused to spend a penny more. Yeah, I know a lot of a lot of people um like get into this rut, right? A lot of people will go in and they'll like breeze through the uh through the intro or not really breeze. Well, if you're spending money, it's it's going to be a breeze, right? So a lot of people do this and they get into the game and then they hit this rock. And we all get to this point, right? Where we have no idea what to do. My best advice is to just like, if you're not going to play actively, that's completely fine. You could play passively. I would just work on your dungeons, pretty much. Because, like, if you have your clan boss together, if, um, you know, you're, you're already one king everything, then you could work more so on, like, getting higher in arena. Like, there's always something to do. You could focus on arena. You could passively work on your dungeons, get better gear, which is going to help you access the other areas of the game. So, like, you could do Hydra. But at the same time, it's one of those things where, like, if you don't know why you're playing, then you're not really going to be playing. Maybe consider taking a break.